The first grain ship to leave a Ukrainian port since the war started is headed to Lebanon. The ship left Odessa early Monday morning carrying 26,000 tons of corn. It passed an inspection in Istanbul yesterday. The shipment was made possible after Turkey and the UN brokered a deal last month. Charlie Daggett is in Odessa this morning with the latest. Charlie, good morning. Good morning to you. That ship actually left port here in Odessa on Monday. The Russians have been blockading Ukrainian ports since the invasion in February. Now, today, Ukrainian authorities told us at least 16 more grain ships are stuck here in port waiting to leave. One ship may be a drop in the ocean of Ukraine's blockaded grain, but it's a start. Former Rear Admiral Frederick Kenny Jr. among the team of international inspectors who boarded in Istanbul. The purpose of the inspection was to ensure that the vessel was carrying no unauthorized cargo or personnel. Just more than 26,000 tons of corn. But there are more than 20 million tons of grain trapped in silos and ports in Ukraine, desperately needed amid a worsening global food crisis. There's been a lot of cooperative, coordinated effort by all parties, and uh, we'll keep operating. That cooperation at sea has not been replicated here on land. Less than 24 hours after agreeing to allow safe passage, Russian missiles pounded the port city of Odessa. Military spokesperson Natalia Humanyuk said there is no such thing as trust in Russians. It revealed that Odessa had been targeted by another missile overnight. Russian forces have been bombarding the nearby south coast city of Mykolaiv in the worst shelling since the war began. Wheat fields have also been targeted, turning Ukrainian farmers into firefighters. But Ukrainian forces are hitting back with U.S.-supplied HIMAR systems able to target ammunition depots and artillery far behind Russian front lines. Yesterday, President Zelensky said one cargo ship is nothing compared to what's unfolding here. He said the consequences of this war are horrible, not just for Ukraine, but for everyone in the world. Nikki and Lana. Charlie, what can you tell us about reports of a dispute between Ukraine and Lebanon over a separate grain shipment? Yes, well, it does get confusing because Lebanon is part of the picture. But what happened recently in the past couple of days is the Ukrainian ambassador in Lebanon has requested that a ship that is in, in, in the, the port there, Tripoli in Lebanon, be held back because he alleges that the grain um, and, and the produce on that ship are actually from here and have been stolen by, stolen by the Russians. Now, where it gets complicated geopolitically is Lebanon with its proximity and loyalties to Syria and the Russian loyalties to Syria. The Russians have applauded the Lebanese leadership to say, nope, this we have legitimate papers. This ship should be able to move on. But as far as the Ukrainians are concerned, they believe that this ship was stolen by the Russians, mm -hmm. then made its way to Lebanon. And that's why, why they've made this appeal to hold that ship back. But at the moment, Lebanese prosecutors said this ship is free to go. Mm -hmm. Well, it is promising that, that the shipments are getting out in many ways. But tell us, what's the military situation like on the ground where you are now? Yes, well, in Odessa, we spoke to one of the mil there's some children walking by. It's a good <laughs> some sign. normalcy here. I can report that. <laughs> Families walking around. It's a beautiful place. Odessa is a great place. But Odessa was hit overnight. We spoke to a military spokesman who said this is still happening. So it's very dangerous in terms of these cargo ships that are in the port and need to leave. Uh, it's still getting hit. As I said in my report, although the Russians said, yet yeah, we're going to allow safe passage, they hit the port within 24 hours of making that promise. In their words, you just can't trust the Russians. In fact, she even said the Russians can't trust themselves. Now, close by here in Mykolaiv, which is not far away, there is massive uh, shelling taking place. The Russians are trying to push back Ukrainian forces who are trying now to mount a counteroffensive to take over Kherson. I know it gets a little bit um, complicated here, but you've got Odessa, you've got Kurson, which is now under Russian occupation. And Mykolaiv is a very important strategic city. So the Russians have been trying to push the Ukrainians back at the same time as the Ukrainians trying to push forward. So Mykolaiv has seen the worst shelling this week 
Those are the words from the Ukrainian government. The worst shelling this week since the war began. Mm -hmm. Not far from here, a strategic city that sits between uh, uh, Kherson, which is under Russian control, and Odessa, which the Russians are desperate to take over. Mm. Charlie, as you know, the U.S. Senate voted to approve the NATO membership for Sweden and Finland. Could this impact Russia's strategy in the war? Uh, certainly in terms of provocation. Moscow would see this as a provocation. These are two countries that had agreements with European partners and, and in with European partners and the United States. But in terms of a military alliance, we need to keep reminding ourselves that NATO is a military alliance. Now you've got two countries that have been relatively neutral that are right along the Russian border. Strategically, does that matter? Ultimately, yes, because then you can set up NATO weapons along these what may be NATO countries. This isn't something that happens immediately. There are other NATO partners that all have to agree, agree with that. Um, as well. And that, that's a complicated process it can, and it can take some time, even though they said that they'll find a way to speed things up, to expedite that process. So in, tor in terms of the short term, militarily, strategically, it's not going to make that much of a difference for what President Putin and the Russian army and the Russian military are trying to achieve here in Ukraine. Long term, because we have to think of what's happening geopolitically between Russia, Ukraine, why it matters to the United States, why it matters to the West, why it matters to NATO partners. It is absolutely an escalation as far as the Russians would be concerned to have two of these countries militarily involved with the United States and NATO partners right up against the Russian border. All right. Charlie, thank you.